Hello everyone. Welcome back to another stream of the compiler development. Uh, this is Sajad, and um, I'm hoping that we get quite a lot done today. So I'm not sure if you noticed the title difference. So today we are going to, uh, after some initial cleanup, we aim to create the computational graph for the Rumi programming language. No, we are going to reprogram it because we've done this before. But um, so yeah, that's my goal for today. Uh, but I'm guessing I have to wait a few minutes for others to show up and then we can start. So yeah. How are you guys doing today? Is everything all right? Right, so to get started, uh, I'm going to continue to do what we did yesterday, which was um, correctly tokenizing the things that we have. So for example, instead of writing a while statement using symbols and stuff like that, we just we are just interested in the expression and the statement. So I'm going to work on that, uh, complete that, and then we can, you know, start doing what we want to do. So yeah, and that's the goal for uh, getting things started. So let's start there. And the first thing that I'm going to do again is I'm going to create this thing. Right. So what's happening, guys? Uh, let's see. Are we even live? Yeah, we are. Okay. Right. And so the idea again is that uh, currently we are using uh, tuples to talk about different entities that we have and we don't want to do that so we are going to create a new token for any possible entity that we might have and then we are going to write our code using the new tokens but that we've done most of this and the only thing that is left is the while token and if token and probably curly brackets but that's it Mm, you've taken care of everything else. Yeah. So, uh, and that's what we are going to do today. Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm rewriting the constructor for the while token. And uh, so we can see that the, the parsing mechanism is essentially what we have on the screen at the moment. So um, this returns a tuple, this returns another tuple, another tuple, another tuple, and I don't like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to capture this. And if it's not a valid, Parse, we're just going to return nothing. Otherwise, we are going to return a parse result with a while token inside of it. Right, so uh, what do we need here? Well, we need the 
we need this value and we need this value so i am going to make it like so right okay so uh in the wild token i'm interested in having two other tokens so the first one is the value and the other one is the statement right and i think we can just get them here and in our constructor and again here in our other constructor right so we can just capture these values and then uh, value would be value and statement would be statement and then the rest is there right so uh what is the value the value is so we we know what the value is the value we can capture it from uh this part so it would be convert a dot token to a tuple token and then capture t2 t2 this would be the value for our uh while element basically and we have the same thing for this statement which would be token star s tuple token star and then that p dot token you can see oh, this is here and the second element to that token right and we s again um you know we have the value the statement cc source the starting position we can get from b dot token s pose and b dot token e pose right and no matching constructor um DCS pose and equals I that should be it actually. While token, so token star value, token star statement. Ah. That was happening because we are renaming the value. Okay. So that's our while, and now we have to add a describe method for it. So, which is easy, relatively speaking. So um a while token to describe a while token we are going to return while and then um value dot describe and then something like that and then statement that describe so this is only for debug purposes so we don't really need to make it look pretty or anything we're just going to clean out uh our while value uh the the, the state the condition if you will and then we are going to add the, the statements after that so for example here our condition is a and the statement is this if expression right uh so let's see if this works i'm going to maximize the screen I'm going to run it. Let's zoom in actually. So, yeah. Yep. So, the while the condition was IDA, and this is the statement. So, that worked. Right. Uh, and this is, uh, again, for those uh, joining you, I'm missing the number of viewers rising. Uh, we are going to start work finishing up what we had yesterday, and then we are going to work on the computational graph. And that would be um, my goal for the end of today. Hopefully, we can. Um, have the computational graph of Rumi finished uh, in two or three hours, right? So yeah, um, so that's our while parser, and I'm going to actually toggle or to hide because I want to be able to see my screen. Right, let's do it for the if parser now uh, because that's that's what I want to see next. So uh, again. Very very similar to what we had earlier. Uh, even in fact, I'm going to copy what we had. Uh, we are going to define our if token, and the only difference is 
uh, from a uh, data structure standpoint, the only difference between an if token and a while token is that the if token has two statements. So we have SD1 and SD2. Possibly one of them could be null because you don't always have an else statement for your if, but you know, it doesn't have to be. So SD1 and SD2. So that's our uh, if a statement, if token, not statement, sorry. And we can do the same thing for copy this one to here and then rename it to if token. Same thing there and same thing there. All right. So uh, we have SD1 and token star SD2. As I said, the only, the only difference is we have two statements here and we are going to still store their value. The rest is the same, the description is different. So we say if value, then SD1 describe. We can even do something like this. So we can slash n add that many tabs. Then yank this. Right. And then st2 dot describe. So that would be the if a statement that we want to have. And right. So looking at this, the next thing that you're interested in is here. So we have to capture. We have to convert our uh, current, what do you call it? Our current tuple into the if tokens. And um, so the values that we are interested in is the VP, the statement, and the other statement, right? So I'm going to do it like this. And I'm going to I'm gonna create a new variable here, call it VP T V uh, value token okay VT value token and then this is the if token which continues off of VT right yes we need to do it like this so uh, if at this point you didn't find the I just return right. Otherwise, right. So at this point, we are sure that we have the if statement, but we are not sure if we have else statement or not. So we can we can work that out. We can capture our value and then think about it later. Again, this is a tuple token, so we can do it like this. And we are interested in the last element, so t two for the statement one. We can get it from either token, the last value in either token here. Uh, tuple like that. Right. And then, depending on whether or not we have else, we can do something here. So, if we have else, uh, I'm going to do it like this. So, this is zero by default. And if we have the else token, SD2 would be. The tuple token value of that here, right? This is the else statement, and in the end, we are going to return a parse result of new if token values d1, d2, ccs, and for us, pose we are going to use ah, um. We are going to use i dot token expose i dot token e post and in the starting position and end position, right? And if token, okay. So that should do it for the if statement. And let's see if it works. Oh, it didn't. 
So where do you think I made a mistake? I suppose. Ah, we are returning zero. We should return zero. We should return uh, I. Returning zero was for wasn't for here, but okay. Let's start with route line to see if we can capture where the error is happening. Uh, in the describe, oh right, 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 right. We don't necessarily have the the second statement, so yeah. So if we have the second statement, describe it. Otherwise, do nothing, and maybe even move this one inside. Okay, because ST2 could potentially be empty. We don't necessarily have it to be displayed, and we were printing it, resulting in the error that you saw earlier. So, yeah. And you can see now the if statement is, you know, prettier. <laughs> I don't know. Right, and that should be everything that we have at this point. Um, I'm just going to skim and see if I spot anything else. We could potentially change the ID to something else, but that's fine in my opinion. The numbers are fine, the types are fine. Oh, uh, maybe, 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 maybe this one could still use some work. The function types. So the function types are uh, sort of not ready at the moment, and we can we can fix that. So how would you uh, fix a function type? Well, uh, we can. Hmm. Yeah. Function types. Function type parser dot h. We create a function type token, which is a public token, and like so. And we can, uh, for reference, we can use the function parser. So we have ags, we have return type, and then we have a constructor. All right, so return type is potentially zero. The constructor name should be function type token. We do it like that. We don't need to capture these values in the constructor. Oh, I guess we can. Uh, no, let's not do it. Okay. And then we are going to just function type parser dot c plus plus. We are going to just write it. Uh, why is I use string over there? I don't know. So function type token. Uh, the constructor is pretty straightforward. We just have to pass these values to the underlying token like this. So this.cc, this.s, this.s pose, and this.ending position like so. And for the describe, we are returning a string. And let's look at our function parser. Okay, so um, we want to capture uh, the arguments, and then we want to capture the return type. Okay, so I'm I'm just gonna start a string here. So since it's a function type, it's always going to have an open parenthesis and a closing parenthesis. And it is potentially going to have a return type. So if you have the return type 
and plus equal um, return type that describe. Potentially, we should add the arrow here. And if you don't have a return type, we know your return type is units. Right? Yeah. So we also have to add the the, the arguments. So I'm going to do that. The arguments would be this dot size and then we add a for loop. This is just a regular for loop. So we want to display the, the arguments one by one here. And again, this is only for debug purposes. So it doesn't matter if the, um, you know, don't end up with something that's looking good. So uh, I'm going to call describe on all the, the arguments. And if they aren't the last one, add a comma for them, like so. And that's the describe function. So the last thing that I want to do, I'm going to create a um, function type token, FTT, new function type token. We have CC, we have S, we have close, and we have zero, right? Um, Private constructor. This is all, this is all public, man. But uh, okay. So we have we have that, and uh, where we return. So so if the parse wasn't successful, we are just going to return the unsuccessful successful result as is. But if it is successful. We are going to update the S post based on that. And um, okay. Same for the ending position. Right? Yes. So uh, the starting position and the ending position should be updated based on the parsed result and then return it. In a parse result FTT. Okay, so uh, the only thing that we have to handle, we have to handle the return type. And uh, okay. This is a type parser, right? Yes, so that would be a return type. Uh, so FTT.RT would be. Apple token and that token, the second one. So this is that one. That's our um, return type. And for the arguments, whenever we parse something here, okay. So I guess I guess if we are here, that means that the parsing was successful. So we can. Um, Add it to the to the ads. So how do we add it to the ads? We just call it like this, and we do temp that token. Uh, oh, I'm missing an open parenthesis. Okay, and we are calling the second argument here again because you know that's the second. Um. Right, so so this should be a pretty version for our types. So a um, let me do it like this. Bring out the test file. So a is from nothing to int, which is correct. F is from int int to pointer int, which is correct. Uh, G is pointer, whatever this is, to, yeah. Pointer to, from pointer of this to this one, which is exactly correct. So 
that's fine. And uh, I guess we are going to start working on the computational graph. So let's talk about what exactly we want to do with our computational graph. I'm going to uh, open a file here. The draw they O. Right. So, what we're interested in. So, um, any program language, any source code is just a series of text, basically. And after performing the tokenization and the parsing, we end up with some blocks. Um, so some functions, so this could be, for example, main, and we have some, uh, in the main function, we might call another function. For example, we might call the print function. And so in our program, we, we might say that this has uh, a dependency to the print function and we might even shape in that way or another. And we say that, uh, what type of dependency is this? It's a link dependency because we don't care about the print statement until the moment that we are going to link our program, right? And so what this means exactly is that the compiler has different stages. The first stage, uh, the parsing stage, that's done. Then uh, we have a preparation step in which we are going to um, look at different components in our, our code and decide how we are going to handle them. So for example, an interface is a store uh, using two different, um, what do you call them? Two different structs, right? So we have two different structs to represent one interface. And in the preparation step, we, finalize the size of those structs and uh, the behavior of those structs. So we have to look at the, uh, in our computation step, whenever we have an interface, the size of that interface is finalized in the preparation step, right? Um, and calling another function is uh, only important to, uh, we only need to handle it in the linking step. Before that, we don't care where the function is. All we care about that the function exists. So uh, we want to call it in the link step. But as I said again, um, the let's let's just I don't know what to do. Let's uh, represent them with a circle. So the structs we need to have the information to for structs in the preparation step. And why do we need in preparation step? Because the structs have members and we need to know um, how to access those members, right? And uh, again, interfaces, we have a dependency to them in the preparation step. Not only that, interfaces and structs, uh, the ones who are casted to each other, they have a dependency to, with each other too, right? And so this dependency graph, it, it doesn't look anything like this in our real application. I'm just putting an example out there. It's a uh, much more complicated. So um, get things started. We need to uh, show this in a struct somehow, in our classes somehow, and say, okay, I have a dependency, I have a link dependency, or I have a preparation dependency to some other thing. And the Target could be either, the, the target is essentially as an entity, right? It could be a file, it could be uh, a function, it could be a struct, an interface, an enum even, or whatever else, right? So let's just get this started. So uh, I am going to start by looking into our CC file. So that's empty, which is good. 
Next, we have the base file, which store, which has all of the important structure of our code. Right, so uh, that's fine. So we are going to start the ASD because of the um, the um, computational graph should be represented in the abstract syntax tree. So uh, I'm going to start the ASD folder, and you are going to witness how we try to handle uh, CMake. Right. So I created a new folder here. Um, AST folder and uh, we're just gonna leave it like that for now. Okay, so we have to have a CMake file in here CMake list.txt. I think that's what you call it. Lists up. Uh, new CMake list is CMake list. Right. And I'm going to copy off our other function. Right. So we essentially want to capture um, make, oh my God. It's uppercase N guys, not lowercase. Yes, finally. Okay, so we are going to query all of the C++ files and capture them in the SRC variable and then we are going to create a new library call it the ASD and we are going to say that we depend on all of the C++ files there and then we are going to remove that go to the source folder and we are going to say that okay uh, we have another subdirectory subdirectory it's called uh, ASD and uh, base has a dependency to AST. And base is used both in the room and roomy. So it should be fun. So I mean, we're going to build it. Um, no source given to AST. OK. Let's give it its first source code. It's empty for now, but that's fine. Yeah. So CMake compiled. And now we can start writing our code. And that's how I like to uh, handle dependency within my application so that you know in future I can change anything anywhere I want. That's using CMake, of course. You know, sometimes I want to use make or other things. Okay, so uh, ASD, what's the ASD? So the abstract syntax tree. Um, Oh, um, uh, set up ASD. So the act, the abstract syntax tree uh, is in charge of converting these tokens to a more meaningful approach, All right? Um, I mean, this is this is fine. We can live with this, but. It would be nicer if we had a node for functions that, um, for example, have a compile thing that you can just call and have everything figured out, right? So that's what we want to do in here. And the base thing that we have is, again, the AST, which is going to be our abstract syntax tree. And I'm going to uh, call it AST node. No, never mind, just the AST. So um, the AST should have the following functions. It should have a void compile function. It should have a void prepare function. Prepare. Right. And um, I guess that's it for now. And we again have uh, dependencies here. So I'm going to add a vector of AST stars, compile depths, let's include vector. And 
cut that. Let's do it like this. So it's more C plus plus C, I guess. Right. And uh, so this is where we're going to store uh, our dependencies, right? And again, this is a uh, virtual object, and we're not going to instanti instantiate it ever. So I'm going to remove the definition for it. Uh, virtual AST, like that. So that you cannot create an AST instance. You can only have pointers to AST, or you can extend the AST. That's the goal. Right. So, um, I think that's it. Actually, we don't have anything else to add here, right? Um, this should be zero as well because AST it doesn't mean anything, right? Okay, but. Uh, the next file that we're going to create, and the, that's the most important file that we have, it is going to be a source. But, it, uh, well, we can call it, uh, well, let's start with something else. We can start with a function. So, the function a uh, dot h. So what's a function? A function is extending AXT publicly. It has a certain properties, so include AST.h. Where did I create this file? Hang on a second. Right. Ah, it's because it's lowercase. Okay. So, what's our... Uh, So the function, aside from all of this, has certain other elements inside of it. The most important one, it has pointer to statements. Right? We also just gonna write it like that. We have a pointer to statements. We have a pointer to add, and we have a return type. We are also going to override the compile method, so void compile and void prefer. Again, these are all virtual. And we don't have statement, we don't have type, and we don't have X. And we can if well. Like so. All right. So uh okay. That's the base idea of what an AST looks like. And um, if you notice, the, the compile dependency here would be in charge of actually figuring out um, of handling the computation graph. So um, let's quickly create the statement file, and then we can start working uh, on managing the compile dependency and the prep dependency. So the statement 
h a statement is again a very basic class it's type of an asd and uh, we have to include asd.h right and i don't think we have anything we have anything to add for now we are only interested in differentiating between the statements and other nodes in our ASD. Right. So, uh, function.c++, we are going to include it. And we are going to also include statement.h because that's important to us here. Right. So, how are we going to uh, prepare or compile? Well, um so what is each step going to do during the proper step you are going to identify the uh compile dependency and here we are going to identify the link dependency maybe it's a good idea if we change the name of this to link steps instead of um right so and anything any other dependency should be handled within those functions right so uh how does a function prepare itself well we know for for one thing that if my statements depend on another node then i should depend on them Right. So if one of my statements is calling a function, it depends on that function. So I should depend on that function. And I'm going to uh, basically copy the dependency of all of them here. Right. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So we start by, um, yeah. We start by running a for statement. The statement star s in statements, and uh, for any dependency that you have in the compile dependency, so for ast star depth in s dot compile depth. Uh, member access into incomplete statements, but are you sure it's an incomplete type? Oh, I'm the state. Wait, is this Emacs or? Is it actually called a statement? Uh, I think I made a typo somewhere. Oh yeah, my file names are wrong, and this is one statement. How do you spell it? Statement. Right. So this is wrong. Right. So for all of the dependencies, you have to add them to your dependency. So compile depths that push it back. Yeah. Right. And uh, ideally, you want to check for duplicates uh, because you know you only need to have a dependency to something else once. You don't need to do it multiple times. And I think maybe it would be a better idea if we move from a vector to a set. I think that's a better idea. We do have sets in C standard lib, don't we? Yes. So let's quickly review what functions we have here. So we have insert, 
and we have fine and fine returns and i think if it's not found so yeah right just call insert and then we are done we don't need to check the duplicates anymore because this is a set and uh, this is the base of the preparation function we also have a dependency to the return type uh, and to the argument so i'm going to return type next but we don't have the asc file for those so i'm just gonna ignore them for now and then the compile the that's the prepare and this is the compile so again for each statement we want to see what dependency they have in link time so sdef link dependency and then link dependency of ourselves in the dependent. Again, we have dependency for these two, right? And I guess we need an extra function here uh, for code generation. Um, so code generation, AST doesn't necessarily have a code, genera code generation, but statements always have the code gen function so i'm going to work it here and for code gen they do get the cc maybe they should get the cc for compile and prepare too probably i don't want to risk it uh so let's pass the context right and include cc.h for access to those types and there we go so the function is a statement not a ast directly so we are a statement which in turn is a function you don't need this anymore right and uh you do have to include vectors because the these are sole vectors for us. Right. And uh, so this would be how we handle the computational dependency in our system uh, for functions. We have to repeat this process for every other type, and uh, that's going to take a lot of time. And I'm starting to lose my voice here today uh, for some reason. So uh, I want to stop early, but we can continue this another time. So yeah, thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully we can uh, see each other tomorrow again. So have a wonderful day and see you soon. Bye-bye.